Alrighty, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning in as always. It's great to see everybody back. So today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about a new type of a board. Well, not really new. This board's been around probably for maybe a couple of years now. And if you guys have seen this board before, there's been numerous reviews of this particular board online. So my my review isn't as different probably as many of the other ones but i did still wanted to make this review because i i did get this board i was really excited about getting this board uh, once again i was able to put together some of the gift cards that are were still around after my birthday and i was able to get this this particular board this is the square off board what makes this board different from some of the other boards for example there's a lot of electronic boards out there that are able to sense the pieces on the board and they give you a readout as far as notation. This board is unique in the way that basically what it ends up doing is that it has a like a magnetic um, system on the inside underneath the board that will actually grab on to the opponent's pieces and it moves them around so it almost like feels like what people have been describing this as, as, as a magical chess board. So I thought about getting this board for a while now just because the idea of pieces moving on its own was something that was intriguing to me. And so after, after my birthday I was looking around and I stumbled upon this board several times actually on the House of Staunton. This particular one was refurbished and I think the price for this one was around $260. I think you can get this new from the House of Staunton around 400 maybe a little bit more um, You can also get this from other chess distributors. You don't have to get it from House of Staunton You can get it from the website itself if you google square off. They'll show you different options Okay, everybody, so let's go ahead and start by taking a look at what came in the box This package came from the House of Staunton as you can see here. It says handle with care fragile. Thank you So let's take a quick look. So this is how it came packaged. You have this really nice bubble wrap here uh, kind of protecting the the box the square off box. So let's go ahead and Take this out as I said, I already unpackaged everything. I just want to show you guys how it was packaged initially so Here we have the box inside a box and you just pull the handle So this is the square off kingdom set kind of unhook these sort of pull these out and uh, originally the board came in wrapping, but I already removed everything. Um, you could see this, this really nice thick styrofoam, not only on the sides and all around the box, but also on top as well. You could see that um, it's been made to ensure that there's gonna be no damages. Also really thick, thick padding on the inside. So. Kind of the box slides in here and it, it doesn't move or anything like that, which is really nice. Square off. Comes with this box, which um, holds the power supply. And then it holds this little thing and I, for a little while I was trying to figure out what, what is this. This is to hold like your iPad or your phone. Um, and I'll talk about that here in just a little bit but you could sit it down on the table like that and just basically holds your iPad like this. And then this little box right here um, is for the pieces. I already took all the pieces out. This right here is kind of a very inexpensive material. Once you slide the pieces out of here, I mean you could, I, I guess you could still put the pieces back in but they're, they're, they're not made like this thing is not made to keep the pieces in here indefinitely. I think this is sort of like a, an initial packaging for the pieces. Once you're done with that, it's, you know, take it out. Now this particular variation is the Kingdom set. Um, you also have a slightly more expensive variation that has um, extra little bit of space on the side for all the pieces to basically migrate to each individual slot. So. All the pieces will have like for the spaces for the pawns and the major pieces. And whenever a piece is taken, um, it will move to their correspondent locations. Whereas in this particular 
uh, variation. And what it does is that it, once the piece is taken, the, the magnet will actually push the piece right off to the side and it will leave it there. And once it leaves it there, it does no longer tracks it. So you can take that piece away at that point so it doesn't clutter your board. Or you can leave it there, but the problem is if, if the piece moves to the side, um, it will leave it there and then the next piece that it intends to move, if it moves it to the same location, it will push the other piece out. So sometimes you want to go ahead and just remove the piece once it has moved it to that location and just so going back, I got this particular board from the house of Staunton and it was classified as refurbished. Now, when we think about refurbished electronics, refurbished items for sale, what do we usually think about? Well, usually what ends up happening is if a particular electronics device or what, what have you, let's say somebody has it for a while and then something goes wrong with it. Whether it was dropped, whether something malfunctioned, they take the device, they send it off. I guess it goes back to the factory. They'll take the device apart. They'll figure out what components are not working properly and they'll put brand new components in there, seal everything back up and then they, they sell it to you. At least to me, that's kind of what it sounds like a refurbished item. Uh, you don't necessarily think that a refurbished item might have, you know, something that's not working properly. This particular variety of the board, as you could see here, comes with a sort of a wood color. If it, if it is wood, it's probably like veneered wood. Um, and underneath, I'm probably thinking there is either plastic or a really a not very thick piece of wood. The board itself doesn't weigh a whole lot. The mechanism that I, and I haven't taken this board apart, but what it sounds like is there's these, these little pulley system that's going back and forth like this around the whole board, okay? So it's, it's moving around and right in the middle there, there's gotta be some kind of a little magnet or something that basically slides underneath the entire board and that little tiny magnet uh, gets activated when it finds the location of the piece that it wants to move. Together with the computer that's running the whole system, they're able to identify which piece they wish to move as far as like the opponent's pieces. Then the magnet is, is activated and then it grabs onto the piece and it pulls it to a new location where it needs to go. All that, it does make a little bit of noise. So I'll show you guys a little bit close as, as far as how this works and what I like and don't like so much about it. First of all, this particular board, you um, you have to have a, some kind of a phone or a device, some sort of an Android or an iOS system in order for you to play this. So that's an important consideration, especially if you're looking to get a square off board for let's say a nephew who's like eight years old. Nowadays, eight year olds have a phone or a tablet or some kind of an iPad or something. But if that person doesn't have those things, then that's definitely something to keep in mind because this board will not play unless you're connected through Bluetooth to some kind of a device that you're able to control things from there. The board comes with this sort of a little tiny expandable sort of a device. And the first I was looking at this and I figured, what is this for? So this is for like your tablet or your cell phone. Um, it sort of opens up and it gets stuck about halfway um, and then you place it somewhere on the table or, or somewhere where you can basically put your phone in it or your tablet. My phone, I have an OtterBox uh, case, so it, it doesn't fit in the OtterBox case uh, because these little, uh, these little widgets here are they're too small for it. So I would have to remove my phone uh, to do this. Lucky for me, I go to Goodwill more often than my wife would like. So I end up getting a bunch of these like cheap little expanders like this. And I can just put my phone in here and that way I can basically have it, you know, to where it can show me. You need to go online and you need to upload this Square Off app right over here. When you get the app, it will run you through 
um, a couple of different instructional uh, pages. It will ask you to create an account with Square Off. You can use like Facebook or other to create login or you can create an account from a brand new one. In the instructions, the very first thing that it will say once you open the app uh, and you register is it'll say that there's a little tiny screw on the bottom of the board that you need to unscrew. And once you unscrew the, this, this screw all the way from the bottom, the that mechanism that I was talking to you guys about it basically kind of unhinges and it starts rolling around and uh, my best guess is they are using this little screw here so that it'll keep it in one spot when this board is being transferred and before it's being purchased so that that mechanism does not get damaged inside once you remove that it tells you to go ahead and use Bluetooth to connect to your board. It tells you to turn the board on. There's this one button right over here. Okay, so what it's doing right now is my best guess is it's calibrating. I guess right now it has calibrated completely. So I don't know where it's moving, what it's doing, but maybe what it's doing is it's sensing the where the the edges of the board are or whatever it's doing and now once you got everything all you have to do is connect your board and now we're connected it says that there's a link between um you have the opportunity to either stream games to play online with other people who have this type of a board or you can play with the square off itself I have played, you can either adjust the difficulty to auto, which will create an auto adjust as far as the strength based on your moves, or you can do a manual one, which allows you to go from level one, which is ELO of 800, all the way to uh, ELO of 3380. But let me tell you guys, I went to auto and I was just playing and kind of testing this board out and uh, I really wasn't even paying attention to the game and I made a bunch of blunders, I'm sure, but um, it I beat the board and then it told me that the board was playing on level nine, which is like close to 1500, but I knew that I made a bunch of mistakes and everything. So I'm just like, I'm not really entirely sure if the those ELOs are, are entirely accurate. So once you wanna go ahead and start the game, you can either do auto or you know and you can figure out so the game has started okay and basically the way that this works is you can you can press this little board button and it'll actually show you the board in case you need that in the instructions it tells you that the pieces that you move you need to take a piece like this and then you need to depress basically like kind of like a a firm press until you hear a beep and then where you want to move okay here we go on the uh, computer it shows you that you made that piece and then it shows you where the opponent's gonna make their piece the opponent has made the, the their move so we're gonna go ahead and go with that and I mean let's just go ahead and take it so we take it so I can show you guys how it works I put this on the side this is how it'll work first well, that's as interesting. So, so it didn't do that. Okay, so it didn't go with the, with the regular opening in this particular case. Let's go ahead and we'll just play out the opening, whatever we want to do, and kind of see how it works. So it's 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 doing some interesting things um, so far. Here's another thing too. The pieces here are small I mean the pieces themselves are not very big at all and if I had a fan going in this room I would be afraid that the pieces would topple over because they're not they're not heavy at all they're like really really light let's see what it's gonna do it did move away okay mm-hmm so it's just doing some random stuff. Okay, so here it's about to take the pawn. So it takes the pawn, it's pushing it to the side and it stops it there. 
If you don't move the pawn away, the next piece that it takes, it might push it towards the same way. And let's just go ahead and take it. See, there we go. This is what happens. It pushes it into the pawn, causes the pawn to fall down. So you could remove these pieces as you go. It doesn't, it doesn't keep track of the, of the, of the pieces. Okay, so let's just go ahead and uh, this is how you castle. Okay, so far so good. Okay, so I didn't realize I ran out of space, got really carried away trying to play the game and not doing the video. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and talk a little bit more about this board. A um, Couple of things that I wanna mention is, first and foremost, this particular board, the Kingdom set, come, comes in this sort of a, a wood, like pattern here on the side. It looks really aesthetic, looks really nice. But if you didn't want to necessarily have this wood, this dark brown wood, you can have it. I think they have it in a black design to where it's, it's black on the sides. One of the things at first that I thought to myself, well, the pieces here are, are really, really tiny. They're not weighted, so they're super, super light. I mean, these are probably the lightest pieces for any chess set that I've seen, but there has to be a reason for them to be that way because them being like extra light um, is what allows that little magnet on the bottom to work properly. If these pieces were really heavy, it would, it would be really difficult to move them, okay? Secondly, the bases of these particular pieces are, are fairly small and the reason for that is in order for these pieces, especially like the knight, because the knight um, can jump over pieces in, in a regular game, but one of the first questions that I had before I even saw the way that this board worked is I thought to myself, if the pieces, the opponent's pieces are not able to actually lift off the board, how do they get in between the pieces? And that comes down to the fact that the base of these pieces is small enough to where regardless of where you are on the board and which pieces you're working around, uh, due to the small diameter of the base, the pieces will actually be able to work themselves in between the other pieces, no matter like whether it's between queen and rook to queens, whatever the case is, all of the bases are relatively small and it just works out that way, works out fine. If you make the wrong move or if, for example, like the board doesn't talk to you or anything, but let's say that, for instance, if I do a piece that's illegal, meaning I can't really do it, let's say I take this pawn here, I press and then I put it backwards. It'll make that sound that means that that's not an allowed move. So then you have to make, or if you take an opponent's piece, do the same thing. You're not supposed to be messing with the opponent's pieces. Another thing is that uh, when I, before I purchased this board is that I thought that every single piece will have a sensor inside of it that will tell the board that like this is the queen or this is the pawn, you know, and I wasn't aware that that's not the case. What I thought is the board and the mechanism underneath um, understands where all the pieces are. And uh, one of my assumptions, I guess, beforehand is that the, uh, the board will self-align itself. So if I put all of these pieces back on the board and I'll say start a new game, I kind of thought that what's gonna happen is all the pieces are just gonna move back to their to their spaces, but there is, is only one mechanism at a time. And so it's not gonna do that. It tells you go ahead and put all the pieces where they need to be to start the game. So you do that option. One of the things that I want to mention is this is not going to be a game that you will, you know, like a board that you can play like blitz games on because you're not going to have the time. It's not a fast moving board. Okay. In order, for example, if it takes your piece first, it has to find the piece that it's going to take. It grabs onto the piece, slowly pushes it down to the side. Then once it's done that, it moves back and finds the piece with which it took that piece and moves it in that space. By no means is this going to be like a blitz ready a board. 
this is more for, you know, and I, in fact, I don't even think they time you, but um, when you promote the pawn, it will come out over here on your phone and it will ask you which piece you want to promote it to. So that's pretty easy. You could theoretically put any pieces or whatever here. So let's say, in fact, what we can do is we can do something like this. We can take half of the pieces off the board and then we can put a bunch of random pieces on here. or not put any pieces for that matter, because the the um, the sensor, the magnetic sensor does not talk to the pieces. The magnetic sensor on the bottom underneath the board does not recognize whether it picked up the piece or not. It does not send feedback what type of piece it is as far as like the drag of the piece. So let's say, and on your side here, I don't have to have pieces. All I need is, I'll show you up close. If I can show you guys this, this would be, I can just press like this, press, press. It understood that you took your piece and you did what you needed to do. And now let's go ahead and take a look. So assuming that it's assuming that it just moved its pawn, okay. And now I moved mine. So let's see what it's gonna do. Okay, so just a typical scenario. Now, there's no piece there, but it still grabs it, pushes it to the side. Well, here's a problem. Do you guys see what happened? So that's a problem, okay? That's a problem. That was supposed to be an entirely different piece, okay? That is a problem. Let's just go ahead and retry. I'm gonna turn the board off, resign the game. Here we go, let's go ahead and try again. Let's connect this board back up. The board is calibrating. Like everything should be working properly. Normal starting position. So gonna take it with the queen. Did it mean to do that? Yeah, okay. Here we go. Now let's push this forward. Here we go, it's gonna push this. There we go, it pushes the... And there you have it. It was going to take it with the bishop, but it got stuck. The mechanism inside got confused. I'm not sure if square off boards are prone to this type of confusion. Um, basically, it tells me that the bishop has been moved, but in reality, the bishop hasn't. So I'm left with moving this. Once this happens, when you continue playing, so let's say we're doing this... Um, I'm not sure what it's going to do, but once it, the first time it messed up, it continues messes up. So, refurbished board um, has a glitch somewhere inside. And that glitch basically causes the pieces to go haywire. It will play okay for the first, you know, 10 moves maybe, but then something goes off of hinges and it just goes nuts and once it goes that way it does not go back to normal or so it seems it doesn't want to go back to normal um, and that's really disappointing because once again refurbished in my opinion means that they've taken it back to the factory and they have um, replaced the parts that were broken or they were defective 
and they put all the brand new parts in there. That's what refurbished means to me. The refurbished means it's gonna work more or less like new, but we are aware of the fact that something has at some point been replaced in it to make it work better. Again, in this particular situation, everything's been wrapped and it's been, you know, as if it was new. So it wasn't like there was no indication that this was used or anything like that, but um, I think the design and the concept of the square off board is, is really uh, excellent. Um, it's it's new in, in itself and, and I've seen other boards do this, but still I think that to have a board that will move the opponent's pieces like this is, is quite interesting and I feel like it's nice. It's not radical because, I mean, if we think about it, like if you wanted to play against the computer, you could play on your phone or your tablet. Um, and it's a lot more convenient and you can keep the, t the computer in your pocket and play wherever. But this board type of a scenario, it's, it's interesting because it's sort of a, a, a in between playing a, a real life person on a normal board and playing somebody while nobody's actually there. So this could potentially be useful for people who like to play games, but they like the natural feel of, of holding pieces, like the physical pieces, instead of pressing on your smartphone. So definitely that's, uh, you know, uh, one of the advantages of, of checking this board out. However, if I want to play against the computer, a lot of times what I end up doing is I will actually uh, set up a board like I would normally, like a normal wooden board, and I'll place the laptop or the tablet or whatever it is and I'll go to like chess.com and you can either play with a live opponent or you can play with a computer and basically what I would end up doing is I would move a piece and I would also move the piece on the computer. Obviously that shows that you have to move a piece twice but then you move when the opponent moves their piece you move your piece too. So I've done that a couple of times. It's just having to set up. It's time consuming and it's also, you know, you have to have the space. You know, you might be playing a game on your phone and you might be watching your kids at the same time. When you have a board and everything's set up, it does take a little bit more time. You have to actually do it, you know, maybe when the kids are asleep or whatever the case is. But, uh, so the concept is, is, is really nice. The refurbished board not really working properly in such a way that it makes this board kind of useless for me, that's not so nice. So I am intending to call House of Staunton or at least send them an email and try to figure out why this refurbished board just basically glitches every time I try to play a game at like 10 moves ahead, you know, because they could say, well, it was refurbished. You you know, you clicked on the fact that there's an agreement that you understand that this is a clearance item, that there's no return policy or whatever. But at the same time, if, if I'm getting a board that's really not doing what it's supposed to do, then I, I can't play it. I mean, I could still play a game of chess on this, but if I'm not playing against the computer or if I have to correct the computer every time I play, then I could very well just use one of my much bigger boards and bigger pieces to have a much better quality game and just move all my pieces by myself. The whole idea of having a square off board is that it will move the opponent's pieces on its own. Okay, so that was a little bit disappointing for me. A lot of people still enjoy playing on it. It's just that perhaps my, with my luck, I got something that, you know, I wanted to get something a little bit less expensive. So there you have it. I got a board that's not really working the way it should. When I purchased this board, I ended up getting this, uh, this little case here. Um, it was an additional $29 and it has this sort of a pouch in here on the top that you can put your pieces in and you can put the power supply in here and then inside the main compartment is where your board goes. Okay, it's really simplistic case. It has two handles and that's about it. Nothing more. So that allows you to store your board in such a way that you're not really worried about like getting it scratched up or anything. Um, there's a power supply that gets hooked into the side here but uh, there's a battery on the inside of this this board so that way you don't necessarily need to have a power supply to play this game, so... Would I recommend this board now that I've played it? I think that if it was working properly, then definitely, but um, mine's not working the way that I wanted it to, so... I'm gonna send him an email and see what they say, okay? I got another um, clock, actually, I have a couple of clocks, but I got another clock. The DGT Pi, um, it's a chess computer. 
I have not opened it yet because I do want to get myself a DGT board with pieces before I open it up and I'm hoping to make a video about the clock and also a board uh, sometime within the near future. So stay tuned for that video and uh, as always, thanks guys for watching. Um, you know, it's always a pleasure to share some information with you guys. If you enjoyed this video, if you have any comments, please hit that like button and I'll see you guys in the next one, okay? See you guys later. Bye-bye.